Well, August 21st. It's uh, going to be a very rainy day, definitely. But uh, where the Welland tripod broke, I, uh, I needed to adjust the height of this little black tripod. This little black tripod was only three and a half feet tall, so you literally almost had to be on your knee to operate the camera. So what I did is I cut three sticks and I, and, uh, well this one could be a little straighter, but it still works. And I clamped them on, clamped them on that way. So now, if I can stand in front of the camera and operate it as if it was on the Welland tripod. Oops. I almost walked in a bunch of wildflowers. Yeah, ingenuity. Necessity really is the mother of invention. Yeah, there has been one drop or two on the camera. And then it stopped. There was two drops and then it stopped. But it's supposed to be raining. Uh, yeah, the showers are going to be starting, and when they start, they're going to be steady showers. All kinds of mud flat out there. <laughs> now, if you were, if you had the metal detector and you could get out to that mud flat, and, and you had your digging tool, you would have a you would have a blast. I mean, you would probably find some stuff out there that you didn't expect. This harbor has been in use since, uh, since the 1500s. I'll say the 1500s. Cartier came by in 1534. And then the, the Europeans, the, uh, the Portuguese and the Span uh, the Portuguese, the English, and the French all had their vested interest in the fur trade. So the fishermen from the English, French, and Portuguese, they they were here trading trading for furs. The uh, Passamaquoddy, Maliseet, Micmac, the Etchemin, but the uh, only trouble with the the early trading, uh, like for example in Maine, at, uh, in the early at the turn of the 16th century. It only took a few years for smallpox and measles to wipe out 90% or close to 90% of all the Maine Indians. Uh, the survivors, they, uh, they fled and eventually returned. And eventually the survivors returned to their old tribal lands, but then, then there was... Uh, then they had to deal with colonists, and then in war, and more pestilence.
Now, uh, I think between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, there, were, there was at least 20,000 natives, Aboriginal natives, here when Champlain showed up. And yes, about 20,000 of them perished. Extremely large villages. All became ghost towns and survivors. They had to regroup and start out, start out all over again. It was the same story all the way down the Atlantic seaboard. Uh, many survivors along it, many survivors of the uh, epidemics, the Aboriginal survivors, they ran high as high and far away as they could from the uh, from European contact. They just ran away because every time they had European contact, uh, the epidemics would start. So the survivors ran ran into the mountains, the Appalachians, and uh, and uh, the people today, they uh, they probably won't remember who who their ancestors. They won't remember exactly who their direct ancestors were before the early 1600 they might know it as they might know what tribe but the people themselves will, a whole village is just wiped out by disease so it's hard to uh, keep track hard to keep track of the of the ancestors when all the legends and stories and of the people get get hard hit in the ep in epidemics. Wow! I'm just looking here. I thought I I, I thought I saw a seal, but. I, but the tide's just coming in, so the seals, the seals will slowly get more active as the water rises. Now, if I play it smart, I would, to where the tide's so low, I would go look for fossils. But I actually want to try out the camera, the new tripod system. It's not the best. But it's serviceable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, all that is is uh, banded clamps holding the legs together. And that works good. Because now at least at least the camera, I believe the camera stands about five five when when the black tripod is fully erected, which is a lot better than three and a half feet. <laughs> three and a half feet tall, that's a little too short to operate well. Oh gosh, I, it's been a long time since I've seen a tide this low. Not ever low. Yes, it would be a really good time to go for that walk. See if there's any uh, trade beater pipe stem or little fossils. Who knows? You never know what you're going to find. One can always hope for their 16th century wine bottle and 17th century tobacco pipe when they walk out here at low tide.
there's always a hope. Yeah, we got blue sky to the south, but from the north, from this, yeah, like the wind's blowing from the southwest to the northeast. So, yeah. Well, it's going to be a very messy day. All right. Well, I better concentrate on on the big camera and uh, see if I can spot a seal or two. I will see you online.